Today's video is made possible thanks to the generous sponsorship of companies like LuckyGunner.com. Please head to LuckyGunner.com and thank them for being a sponsor of Active Self Protection. My biggest problem with this tool is that, oh no, he can hurt me with it and I can't hurt him. So again, who's in an advantage distance watch here? You, you. Uh, wait a minute. Well, because your tool works and mine doesn't, right? Okay, so, so hold on a second though. This is a short range tool, Sam. Well, I meant the light part. Aha! My photons are a much longer distance tool, but a very short time tool, sure. right? Instant deliverable, but of longer range. Okay, so when's the right time to use this? Way back. So I, I've been cautious about way back, but again, if I'm going to make that decision and go, and, and, and we're going at that slow moment, I go, no, coming, bang, here I go. Right? Okay, fine, I get the, I get it, I'm going to do my things or whatever, but, but if you play with this a little bit, remember what we said before, that, that if he's going to come at me swinging it, because he's freaking pissed, okay. Now I've got to kind of work when is the right time for me to go. But if he's threatening me with it, okay, fine. How much time do I need? He's like, he's like, oh gosh, that guy's going to work, work me. No, bang, go. Holy crap, here we are. We're tied up. Now I can do whatever I need to do. Grab a partner and see what, see what it does for you on both sides of that. How do I make an accurate strike? I don't. Yes. Now that doesn't mean wildly, I, yeah. I, so that doesn't mean I can't wildly swing. That doesn't mean that I can't be effective with it. Because in its arc, it doesn't depend on precision, right? But it does mean that I'm in that second, that you know, half second to a second, that I'm blinded. Well, another reason that a, that a flashlight is a powerful force multiplier, right? So, how else might we use that? Let's move through that then and just recognize it. I'm just trying to hustle because I know we have a very limited time. So, okay, so Sam is, is my attacker, all right? So, uh, I, I don't want you to grip it hard, so but put it in your right hand. I know that's hard for you right now. All right, so we are deciding that we're coming in on both sides, all right? So everybody's already doing this, so this is not hard for us to decide to do. The thing that I like to do when it's time to go for that tool is I like maximum margin for success, okay? And what that means is if that is a bat, would I rather get hit in the head or hit in the side? Side. I'd rather take one in the side. Would I rather get hit in the side or hit in the arm? Arm. Um, Arm. And I, so this is where hard style martial arts, remember that old school outward block like this? This is full of nerves and crap, man. I like the extended outward block just to get this out of the way and because it provides a place for it to, to contour if he catches me a little bit. So if he, if he swings out real slow and comes over the top and I get hit here, okay, I don't like that, but it's sliding this way. Okay, cool. Now I can get a hold of it, right? Now I have a whole lot of time, but that's more margin for success, right? This old school stuff here uh, in our hard style martial arts, there's very little strength here, and I can push this out of the way so fast. So, uh, when if, if I'm going to preempt, there's a difference between the preemption and working on the backswing. Does that make some sense? So, if I'm preempting and I'm recognizing however this works, I'm going to bang, I'm going to hit him with some photons, or whatever, he's threatening me with it, and I'm gonna go. When it's time for me to go, I'm just diving into this. Because what, did you guys notice what happens every time you decided to come in hard? What did he do? Stand swing. He started to swing. Every time. Every time, he's like, oh no, I'm behind, so now I'm gonna go and start my swing. Well, great. So, so I make my decision at whatever moment I go, and I go diving, whoa, cool. Now, is this my favorite spot in the whole wide universe? I mean, I would rather maybe be a little bit more martial artsy and get a hold like this or whatever, now I can start beating you up. But I'm a little safer, I'm a little more margin, if I just go coming, boom, and I catch him here or whatever, and now I've got a hold of this with both. What can I do, what, what options do you see from here, John? You can dump, you get tosses, you lock, you move. I can do all kinds of fun things, not the least of which is once I have a hold of this, I can let go with this close arm. And now, look at what I have here. I can just go to work on it. Here's an interesting thing I want you to experience. Remember, how long is his attention stuck here? Do I have control over again? And well, here's the funny part. One of the things that I'll see, feel this as the bad guy. He swings and I get a hold of this, boom, and I have a hold. And he tries about once or twice to get it back. After a couple times, 
he will then go, oh crap, I have to use something else to get my tool back. And that's when all of a sudden this hand will show back up again. So this is why in the 5 Ds plus 1 we talk about once I've deflected, now I've dominated, and now I have to distract. Because i got to get him thinking about not beating the tar out of me to get his tool back. So how do I do that? I cause him pain and break things on him. What, what pain causing influence have I got here, Candice? You have your flashlight. I have this flashlight, I can pick away at him. Is this effective? You have your knees, you have your head. I, exactly. I have two knees here. I have elbow. I have hand. I've got Scottish martial arts. <laughs> right? You know Scottish martial arts. Fuck you! Yeah. Right? <laughs> Headbutt. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. So I married an axe murderer, right? <laughs> Anyways. So all I want us to feel from here is, is that idea that says, okay, when I'm ready to go, when I decide now, bang, I'm coming, and I get it. Okay, now I can stop right here. And just think for a second. All right. Am I okay here? Now, I notice I overhooked this. Is an overhook better or is an underhook better? Why would you say over? Now, th this is different than grappling. In grappling, is an overhook better or an underhook? Underhook. Why is an underhook better? Because if I have an underhook here, right, I can get, if I get double unders, now I can pick him up and I can do all kinds of trash to him. Problem with an underhook here is... I have less control over the tool. The tool gets up into places and hurts me in bad places. So I like an overhook against a, a, a tool bearing limb. I think that's preferable. But you gotta experience it a little bit. You know, it, it might be better in some instances to get an underhook. The problem of trying an underhook here is, is when it goes and I go, ah, I'm really in a dangerous spot because I've left it out where I don't want it. Here instead, I'm like, ah, okay, cool. And the funny part to me is, is I just superman this, right? If, even if I don't have the tool in my hand, when I decide, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going, whoa! Ah. Was that super refined? Do I look like a big doofus? Yeah. In fact, I do look like a giant doofus. Do I care? Not really. I can pick this elbow up now and start playing games with him, right? And get this around, and now at least I've got him away from me. Especially if I had the, the flashlight in hand, and I start picking around with this. He starts going, oh, don't do that to me, right? Drop it, drop it, drop it, freaking thing. And we go from there. Experience it. Try it a couple times. <laughs>